So you guys may have been following my series that I've done on YouTube, which is basically about things that I wish I knew when I was at school. And this is the next one where we're gonna talk about STEM and jobs to do with STEM. If you don't know what STEM stands for, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths. So due to this, we went to Roche, who we've actually worked before, and we interviewed some of their employees to basically find out a bit more about what it's like, you know, doing a STEM career. Let me explain what Roche is, because otherwise it's going to make no sense at all. Roche is a pharmaceutical company that focuses on developing medicine and diagnostics that help patients basically live better and longer lives. And also what I really like about Roche is they are very focused on equality and they are very diverse and they also have quite a lot of females working for them and very high positions as well. So let's get to know a little bit about the two people that we interviewed. We have Beth, who is 23 years old, my age, oh my gosh. And she is She's a technical service engineering apprentice. What a mouthful. <laughs> a career that I didn't even know existed. This is why this video is important. Yeah. And then we also met Rachel, who was a medical manager at Roche. Another career I just didn't know existed. I have no idea. So the first question you asked us was, what were these people's biggest influence when it came to choosing a career in science? I think it was my chemistry teacher that I just connected with and I really enjoyed the subject yeah. as well. I also think it was my grandma as well. Oh. She suffered from dementia. Oh, okay. so I, it's, yeah, it's, I was always intrigued to why, why, why she, is there not a cure? Why, why is there not a cure? Yeah. Why can there not be more that's done for her? I'm gonna make a difference. I'm gonna make a difference. Yeah. My cousin also, he invented the pacemaker as well. Really? No way. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. My dad is a software engineer, so okay. he works with uh, solar cells, that side of thing. As well as uh, my mum's father was a engineer within the army, so I've always kind of took family yes. science. Yeah. Which I bet they're so proud of you. Yeah. I think this is a question that a lot of people asked us, and yeah. actually I wanted to know this answer too. I have no idea. Do you need a degree to have the jobs that these two have? For my role, you do, but I would say for other roles at Ross, you don't. Yeah, yeah, we've spoken to a few people. Yeah, you can start off as an assistant and work your way through the different roles. Um, I know, you know, we're talking about the commercialization of a medicine and then prior to that. So when you're working prior to that, I know there are loads of roles in terms of the setup of clinical studies and um, I think more of the logistical perspective, you definitely, some of them don't need a degree for. Oh. It's not essential always. No, so yeah. there's we, options for people that don't want to go to university and completely. still want to go into science, but also there's options yeah. for people that want to study. Completely. Yeah, that's good. Nice. No, I, I never wanted to do university. It was kind of like a horror story, just looking at the um, personal statement. Yeah. I did A-levels, so I did A-levels in maths, physics and biology. So I looked around and happened that Rush Diagnostics apprenticeship came up. Applied for it, went for it, and kind of here now. Do you finish the apprenticeship now? No, I've still got You've another You've still year. got another year left. Yeah. And then what's your plan for the future? I want to stay here. I found this one personally very interesting because I don't have a degree. I don't even have A-levels and I always thought if I ever wanted to do a career change, I couldn't because grades and degrees and they're everything. And also what was quite good about this was that we met Beth and then we met Rachel and they both work for the same... Yeah, the they spectrum. both work for the same company. Beth was my age and um, she didn't have a degree or anything and she was doing the coolest job ever. And then we had Rachel who did get a degree and I think it just shows... Just shows the difference. The different it? paths you can get. So the next question, how does it feel to work in what is perceived as a male's career? They're two slight, very different answers, but yeah. I suppose it shows which part of science you work in. Yeah, the answer's going to be different. So first of all, we asked Beth. It's not too daunting. I enjoy it. Uh, most of the guys I work with are really friendly, really encouraging, and they like to see a female. It's still a shock sometimes with the lab staff when you walk in for the first time. <laughs> it's the uh, question of like, you're female, like. Yes. yes. <laughs> I have and I'll be sticking around. <laughs> yeah. There's me and. 15 other males. And then here's what Rachel had to say. For anyone who said that, I actually would say, I don't think it is yeah, a changed. male's career. I think it depends what type of science role you're going into, but I would say for the medical manager role, I think most of them at Roche are females. Well, that's yeah, good. It, it, it doesn't, it, that, that's what we're trying to, you know, 
discuss. It, discuss that, you know, that STEM careers should be just as female heavy as they are male heavy. So you probably wanted to know, we did too, what do they actually do on a day-to-day -day basis? Is it just walking into a lab, putting on the white coat on? Is it working is in an office? I have quite a few meetings, um, but they would be with various different people and teams across the business. So marketing is probably one of my key stakeholders and essentially I help them with ensuring that whatever they're, they're doing, putting out for their sales team or messages or materials, that everything is compliant and scientifically accurate. But also would you say that your job kind of changes day to day then? It's not completely. Is yeah. that nice? I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day is so different. different. So so I shadow a lot of the engineers because I haven't got the qualifications just yeah. to go out my own. So the night before, I would call up or email uh, the engineer I'm meant to be with, find out where I'm going. So you go from different place to place. You don't always know where you are. Yeah. It's not always based here. No. I've oh, been to Ireland. I've been to Germany to do some training. So this question is a really important one. What advice do you have for someone who doesn't really know what they want to do? I would say for now, just focus on a subject that you actually enjoy and you're passionate about. Yes, okay, maybe have a career at the end if you want to be thinking about that. But I think in order to love your job, you need to be passionate about the root of it. And I think whenever I'm getting a bit stressed or tired or frustrated, I I kind of just reflect on why I'm here. Yeah. And for me, it's so easy. I mean, any base subject, such as your math, science, IT, is always a good base starting point to kind of go for, because they're quite easy to use if you want to use them for A-levels, if you want to use them then for degrees, as well as it's okay to do something and then go, okay, I don't like this. Yeah, like you did, yeah. but you had, because you had your science and you, it yeah. gave you lots of options. It gave me a backup plan. So I think what I was really fascinated to find out through these people is that they're both very, very young and they're both very successful. And not that age is anything on success, no. but something that Rosh really focuses on, which is cool, is not just staying in your one job and staying there forever, it's yeah. about development. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking about going to study at university or what to study at A-levels, or even if maybe you should change what job you're doing right now. And I think interviewing these two people, it's very clear that there is an opportunity for, for different people and different interests and different degrees or having no degree. And so it's definitely worth looking into. So even if you guys didn't learn a lot from this video, I did. And so selfishly, I'm very happy with it. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Roche for helping us create this video. Honestly, if they didn't help us with this video, there is no way we would have found these people. Yeah. And there's no way that we would have been able to ask them during their working day the questions we we did. If you'd like another video to the series of what I wish I learned at school, um, then please comment down below and maybe we'll try that one. Someone actually did ask us to do a video on STEM, so here we go. Yeah. That's for you. And now you know what it's like to be a scientist. And we will be seeing you next week. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.